Okay, it is straight up 7 o'clock Central Daylight Time. My name is Doc Severson. Good evening, folks. Tonight we're going to be going over the top 10 skills for growing a small account with options. I am delighted that you've chosen to spend the time to join with me tonight. So, risk disclosure. I'm not going to go into every syllable here of the risk disclosure, but please understand that trading equities and derivatives like options or futures is serious business and should be only attempted by those intending to treat this as a business. Otherwise, this is going to be the most expensive hobby that you can possibly imagine. Now, copyright disclaimer, please, please, please do not reproduce or distribute the information in tonight's webinar. If you would like to reuse it, please let us know. Here's the address and contact information for Ethiotrade. At the end of tonight's webinar, we're going to produce this email address again. So if you decide at the end of this webinar that you'd like to, to reuse this information, please let us know ahead of time. Now, just a word about us at Theotrade. We're a trading education firm based out of Scottsdale, specializing in education for options, futures, and stocks. We were started by professional traders who are first and foremost experienced trading educators. We are not a registered advisory service nor a brokerage firm. So although we provide the best trading education in the business, your results and ultimate responsibility are your own, folks. Individual trading results will vary. Trading does have risk. Trading involves real money. We are here to help you mitigate the risks in the market while learning a skill that you can last for life. Okay, with that in mind, who is this doc guy? Well, I am a, uh, a male model and a um, poster child for Rogaine. I joined Theotrade in April of 2016, and so it's almost been a year now, and it's uh, gone very quickly. I've been mentoring people in options for about the last 12 years, have been trading for a little bit over 20 years now myself. And I've worked with thousands of students during this time. I absolutely love what I do. I am a husband and a father of three, and they're getting to be, um, they're all getting to be of drinking age now. So it's um, getting up there. I'm also a published author on Amazon. I'll talk about that in a minute here. And my passion, what I really love to do is to cycle for charity. So that's the kind where you actually get on and you have to spin the, spin the pedals. But I love to cycle for charity to raise funds for cancer research. So that's something that I'm very, very indebted to. Okay, so with that in mind, what do I believe in? Who am I and what do I believe in? Okay. <laughs> I believe in performance through consistency and not home run trades. So I'm not going to sit here and talk about home run trades and about how I took 50 bucks and turned it into 50000 I believe in trading with an edge in my favor before I will risk my precious trading capital. I also strongly believe that risk management is not what you collect, it's what you keep that counts over time. And I believe in telling it like it is. There's no sugarcoating it in this business. Successful trading requires hard work and a desire to overcome obstacles, both external and internal. Speaking of which, what else I believe in is hacking the holy grail, right? I believe the key to profitability is contained in the space between your ears. It's all in your mind. Trading is more than just strategies and charts, even though we'd like to believe otherwise. It's about owning the strategies that you trade by making them yours and not just buying them enough as somebody else. So I, I do have a recently published book available on Amazon.com that goes deeply into all of this. It's a quick read. So now that you know where I'm coming from, let's talk small account growth. I don't care who you are. Everybody has some form of a small account. Everybody does. It might be your primary account. It might be an account that you've already blown up. So the question here tonight, the challenge in front of us is how can we create a comprehensive system to grow any small account with options? First of all, what is a small account? Everybody loves to frame in the question. A lot of times I get questions from people saying, well, what, how, how big is a small account? And 
you know, can I can I do anything with this? So if you're trading stocks, a $25,000 account might be considered a small account today, especially with the prices of stocks recently hitting all-time highs yet again. If you're trading something like Forex or Futures yeah, with 500 day, 500 intraday margin, maybe a $1,000 account may be considered small. So for our purposes, just talking about options, so let's frame in the discussion today. Any account below about 10000 bucks is going to be a challenge to trade in today's market. So at Theotrade, we do not believe in gurus and hype. Nothing, nothing is guaranteed with financial markets. And I have always had to work hard to earn and then subsequently keep those profits. So I'm going to share with you the top 10 skills that I believe are absolutely necessary to grow a small account into a larger account. So these are necessary skills. So I'm going to bring up some points that challenge you. Please keep an open mind. Please understand that I'm here to help. I'm not here to point fingers. I'm not here to open any wounds. We all have the same challenges. We have all been in the same place. Perhaps I'm just a little further ahead of down the road than you are. So if you can, please follow along in the workbook if you have it printed out or at least viewable. This is going to help your retention. I find that repetition is the mother of skill. If you actually, what I do when I attend webinars is I get busy doing other stuff. I'm walking around the room. I'm sort of half listening out of the corner of one ear, right? So I'm just as ADD as everybody else out there. But I find that using the workbook actually keeps me focused, actually makes me learn something as I go through this. So the workbook link should be posted in the chat window if you have not pulled it up yet. I encourage you to download and print this thing off and use it. Away we go. So just fill in the blanks, make notes to yourself, look at the action items down at the bottom of every page as well. So as I get to the bottom of every section, I'm going to summarize it and give you an action item. I'm going to give you a little bit of homework tonight. You weren't expecting that, but there you go. So I have a lot of material. I have just a, a ton of slides to go over tonight, a lot of material, but I will go through it, I promise, very, very quickly. I'm very brisk with this stuff. I do not tend to pontificate. So I do use a lot of analogies, though. I use a lot of pictures. I tend to anchor things against things that you already know. So hopefully this is not going to be a stretch for you tonight. So let's work together. Please, please, please hold your questions until the very end. And I'll give you as much information that I can in the next hour. Okay, ready? Here we go. We're going to be climbing the stairway of skills tonight. So what I'm a big believer in is building things in a very methodical fashion. I like to build from the bottom up. So many of us love to, to trade like we imagine that we could build houses. So why bother with that foundation or that ugly basement? Why not just start with the second floor of our house first? That's where I'd like to start. And then we wonder why it crashes to the ground. You didn't build it on a foundation. So this is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to build this sort of stairway of skills. We're going to start with the bottom. And the very bottom of this stairway of skills is going to be called Let It Go. Now, this is no, no reference to the, um, the Disney movie at all, okay, or Frozen, whatever that thing is. Okay, so what do I mean by letting it go? Letting it go, letting it go. We all know that when you trade a small account, you are flying right over the tops of the trees, aren't you? You're almost clipping the branches with your account, and you're aware of it every single day. Okay, it's not an easy thing to do. If you dip a wing, you're going in. You're going to auger right in. There's just no margin for error. So I've read many times that blowing up an account is a rite of passage. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not true. I certainly qualified more than once in this aspect. So, but, you know, punch my ticket, got the T-shirt. But what I found was I was fighting in those early days I could not afford to take a loss with those accounts, right? What we focus on is what we manifest, guys. I was trading with scared capital. It was certainly 
not risk capital. So I couldn't afford to lose that money, so I ended up losing. That's how it works, guys. That's how it works. If you're trading with capital that you care about too much, then it will be very, very difficult to take the right setups to give you the maximum edge. You will look for setups that feel comfortable and safe. You will be trading not to lose instead of trading to win. Have you ever seen guy, you know, football teams or any other sports team that got way ahead in the game? Maybe like the Atlanta Falcons. And then all of a sudden, they start playing not to lose. They start playing prevent defense. And prevent defense usually prevents the win, right? You start playing instead of to win the game, you play it not to lose the game. And if you trade like that, I guarantee you that you will erode your capital. Okay, it's very difficult to take the right setups with this. So you might have heard of the HBO series Band of Brothers. Band of Brothers, okay. There's one scene in episode three that perfectly illustrates this point. And I just, when I saw this scene the very first time, I literally got chills up the back of my neck because it was like, oh my gosh, that's the most powerful thing I've ever seen. But in my world, everything relates to trading somehow, right? So everything I see during the day, you know, even if it's, you know, if I see the dog doing something, I can relate that to trading. So we met in scene in uh, episode three, Private Albert Blythe. And uh, he's this guy, throughout the whole episode, he's sort of bumbling around the place and he just can't find himself. And so finally he confesses to his lieutenant that he was scared, that he hid in the ditch rather than join the battle. And so we get to meet Lieutenant Spears, or Lieutenant Ronald Spears. You know why you hid in that ditch, Blythe? You hid in that ditch because you think there's still hope. But Blythe, the only hope that you have is to accept the fact that you're already dead. And the sooner that you accept that, the sooner that you'll be able to function as a soldier supposed to function without mercy, without compassion, without remorse. All war depends upon it. Whoa. Okay, so uh, Blythe got himself a little bit of education there, didn't he? But that's all of a sudden he started to function like a real soldier after that. So how does this relate to trading a small account, you may be asking yourself. Well, I need you to trade without mercy, without compassion, and out without remorse. Don't hide in a ditch and wait for the setups to feel good before you take them. Only when you are truly trading risk capital will you be able to let it go and become an effective trader. Now, in, in Theotrade, actually, during our chat room, there's a, a concept that I use all the time. You guys may have, may have heard the, uh, the term the Viking funeral. Well, that's what they used to do with, with the Vikings of old, is that's how they would bury them. They would put them on a ship, light it on fire, push it away from the shore, and let it burn itself into the fjord. And that's effectively what we have to learn to do with our trades. We have to set them up as best we can, light them up, let them go, and do the Viking funeral on them, right? We can't just sit there and, and obsess over every tick. So we have to learn how to trade to win and not trade not to lose. And so as I'll show you in a minute, there's a progression that you need to follow to get to that point. Okay, we're climbing our stills, stairway of skills here, and now we're going to narrow our focus. Too many of us are trying to be a jack of all trades, right? We read about a strategy, sign up for a program, trade it once or twice, and promptly lose money. So the first thing that we do after that, we all run to the next big thing strategy, like the running of the bulls in Pamplona, and the cycle repeats. So we end up learning about it, how to enter a lot of different strategies, but we never really learn the expertise necessary to close the deal and make profits. This is what I see. This is one of the biggest issues that I see is that people will invest in a strategy, they'll learn about it, maybe trade it once or twice or so, and those don't turn out very well because you don't give it any time. You don't get any kind of mastery in that. 
And then you see this bright, shiny penny over there. There's another, somebody else is advertising some strategy that looks like it's going to turn your $50 into $50,000. And so you go thundering over here, and you go spend money on this strategy over here. Trade it once or twice, and then you lose money in that strategy over there. You get disappointed and say, whoa, wait a minute, what's this over here? Ooh, that looks really good. Let's invest in this one. And so this is the cycle that I see is that guys just do this again and again and again. You know, we're, we're convinced that this big shiny penny over there is going to be the big holy grail that's going to, you know, take us to fame and fortune. But we go through the same cycle again, over and over and over again. We learn about a lot of different strategies. We become a jack of all trades, but we are also ultimately the master of none in the way that we're going about this. So we need to speed up by slowing down. Consider becoming an expert in one stock only, trading one strategy. What? Are you kidding me? Look, if you want your sports car fixed, do you drop it off at Walmart? Walmart's got an auto repair bay right there. I'm sure they could work on a Porsche Cayman. You know, I'm sure they could take your moder Maserati in and, and rotate the tires on it, maybe even balance them. Would you do that? Or would you take it to an expert? Ah, so I have an analogy for you here. So let's consider the case of Beatrix Kiddo. This is a woman with a real score to settle, but she's in a dire need of a really good sword, if you know the story here. Right? So, in today's world, she could just go out to Amazon.com and search on Katana, and up pops the $26 Amazon Katana. This is called the Undead Apocalypse Katana, with 94 customer reviews. Can you imagine that for a $26 sword? There's 28 answered questions in Amazon. Unbelievable. But you could have this tomorrow. You could have this tomorrow. It might fit the bill. Or maybe not. Maybe you could hire the best in the world, Hattori Hanzo. Why do you need Japanese steel? Because he's the best. And there's problem solved. And I think she needed every ounce of that sword, didn't she? <laughs> so if you want to trade against the best in the world, there is no AAA, folks. There's no minor leagues when it comes to trading. You're going against the best in the world every single day. Narrow your focus to one thing only. Become the Hattori Hanzo of your chosen trading strategy. Can you think of some people that have excelled by specializing in one thing only? I mean, I can think of a few examples like Mariano Rivera. Ninth inning, New York Yankees with one or two outs. Who are you going to call? In comes Mario. Close out the game. Get the win. Get the save. Done. Why can't you do that too? Don't be a jack of all trades. Learn one thing and one thing only. Let's continue climbing the stairway of skills. Let's think about creating a system. Again, these are all the skills that you need to be trading a small account and be successful with a small account. Think about what we're doing for a second, right? If you think about what we're doing as traders for a second, we're trying to create a machine, aren't we? Yes, yes. And I, I look at this this way because I'm a former engineer, and we tend to look at everything like a system or a machine or whatever. Okay, so we start out with a little starting capital, right? And so we feed that input into this trading system machine thing. And once we run it through that process, in this case, it's not a black box, it's a green box, we get some finishing capital, we get some kind of result, and we hope that the dollar signs are bigger on the right side of the equation. And then what we're going to do is, because this is a system and it's got feedback in it, we're going to take some adjustments or lessons from what we do. Feed it back into the input and hopefully create a continuous system here. Okay, that's the whole idea. At least on paper, that's what it looks like. 
Buying a trading strategy off of the internet does not constitute running a trading system. It is not a trading system, especially in the way that we typically use it, right? Trade it a couple of times. Hey, this doesn't work. This is terrible. Let's throw it away and buy another shiny penny. At most, it's an experiment. You'll abandon it at the first loss and move on to the next new thing. Haven't we already done that before? Isn't this why we're taking a small account and making it into a smaller account? Because we never get the mastery that we need. Unless you want to fund other people's accounts, running a trading system starts with a plan. Got to have a plan, guys. This is what a trading system is. You start out with a business plan, and we don't have time to go into what's all in a business plan, but a business plan says that right off the bat, You've got goals, you've got measurements that are in there. You're going to run this thing like a business. You're not going to run this thing like an expensive hobby, which is perhaps the way many people are doing it right now. Hey, this is fun, this trading thing. Oops, I'm losing money. It's no longer fun. It's no longer a fun hobby. Treat it like a business. And then on top of that business plan, what we're going to do is add our trading plan to that. Or they can be trading plans, depending on how many strategies that you want to run. But again, I'd like you guys to narrow down, become an expert at one thing. So trading without a plan is just entertainment, my friends. Give that money to charity instead. Do something useful with it if you don't have a plan. Because otherwise, you're just going to fund other people's accounts. If you want to turn your small account into a larger account. Then build a trading system by defining your business and trading plans. And once again, we need to add more skills to trade that small account. We've talked about letting it go, narrowing your focus to a very small subset of strategies and stocks, creating an actual system with business plans and trading plans. And now what we need to do is trade the path of least resistance. Would you prefer to, if you were in a kayak, would you rather go upstream or would you rather go downstream? I think it's much, much easier to go downstream. That's the way I like to go. Or if you're going to ski, I think it's pretty hard to go uphill unless you're going to grab that tow rope. It's much easier to go downhill. Something that I see all the time is traders using yesterday's strategies on today's market. Strategies that work well in these markets, right, do not work so well in these types of markets. These are corrective markets. I know that you're saying that we haven't seen one for a while, and you'd be correct in saying that, but we will. If you focus on a small subset of stocks or ETFs, maybe even one, What happened with me was I decided to become an expert on the S&P 500. I got sick and tired of inconsistent performance, and I said, I'm going to trade one strategy, one stock, and I'm going to master that. So I'm just even suggesting that you focus on a subset of stocks and ETFs. You'll eventually become an expert in their character, won't you? in much the same way that a parent has to sense changes in their children. If you are a parent, you can be in a crowded room with 100 people in there, and you will instantly be able to sense where your children are in that room by the way that they hold themselves, the way that they, you know, their height, just their bearing. You'll be able to spot them a mile away, and that's because that's your job, Right. You have to take that same level of approach towards your stocks that are considered to be your children. So learn to use the correct strategies to match the character that the current market is offering. In other words, the current market right now is not necessarily conducive to selling premium. So if you're a premium seller that's out there running with a VIX of 10, and wondering why your account isn't bigger than it is right now, there's your answer. You Learn to use the correct strategies to match the character that the current market is offering. 
And those that take it to the next level understand what character is usually next in line. What on earth am I talking about here? Okay, markets that do things like this, like yes, like now, okay? Range expansion, my friends, leads to range contraction. Range contraction, when we finally get that, will lead to the next range expansion, whether it's this way or this way. Okay, so you can, once you understand what you're trading, you can learn to anticipate the next character that you expect to see. Understanding the character of the underlying stock is even more important with a small account. You've got to be more nimble and more adaptive. Again, you're flying right over the tops of the trees. More skills here for a small account. Remember, we had to let it go. We had to narrow our focus, create a system, trade the path of least resistance, and now we need to be trading the right option strategies. Yes, there are the right option strategies that are better suited for small accounts. Depending on your expertise, there are literally hundreds of ways to design a trade. We all know this, right? We've all learned about this. Hey, you know, join our program and we'll teach you 44 different ways to trade options. We have the, you know, quantity over quality. So put credit spreads, covered calls, diagonals, calendars, iron, condors, butterflies, jade lizards, da, 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 da. right? So you can impress all your friends at the parties with all the different option strategies that you can trade. But when they ask you, oh, that sounds great, how much money are you making? All of a sudden, you excuse yourself to go refill your cup, right? We've all been there before. So we can set up high probability trades or low probability trades. So the higher probability trades are usually the ones that are offering more than a two-thirds chance probability of success at expiration. Lower probability trades are usually 50% or lower probability at expiration. So most people will say right off the bat, well, high probability is lower is better than lower probability. Why would you want to lower your probability? Or people talk about safety. People talk about safety. So the, the concept of safety always hits as well too. If here is the current price doing this kind of thing, Maybe selling something down here has a perceived level of safety that's much, much better than something that's here. Is that not true? That's what everybody generally thinks. So this is considered to be safer selling an asset that's out here versus selling an asset that's here, closer to the money. Okay, maybe that's the perception. It's not necessarily true, though. We just talked about the need to match the current character of the chart that we're trading to the correct approach for that character, yes? But with a small account, I think we need to take one more step. We need to we need to go to 11, don't we? We need to go to 11. Somewhere somebody stenciled these on from 0 to 11. Brilliant. So you need to get to the point where your trade will not risk more than you seek to earn. Your trade will not risk more than you seek to earn. You will sacrifice probability of success in order to secure a better reward to risk. Actually, there's more benefits than you would imagine by doing that, though. No one trade will take you out of the game if you use the correct money management. While a poorly managed high probability trade can and often does. I'm the one that gets the phone calls. Hey, Doc, what do I do? I sold this vertical spread way out of the money, and now the price is in between the strikes. What do I do? Nothing. <laughs> you cannot fix a trade like that unless you take an enormous amount of risk in the other direction, which is not something I would ever recommend, right? So if you trade properly, though, in terms of risk-reward, one, no one trade is going to take you out of the game. So in addition, you're going to find that profits actually come faster when you play higher reward-to-risk setups because you're playing closer to the money. You're burning faster theta. We need to keep adding these skills onto here. Let it go, narrow our focus, creating a system, trading the path of least resistance, trading the right strategies. And now we need to understand our edge. 
Yes, we need to understand our edge. Quick, if somebody got in an elevator with you and the door is closed, they say, oh, you trade? What's your trading edge? You know, it's that 30-second elevator interview, right? What is your trading edge? I think most people would say, um, uh, I like charts. I don't know. So most traders that I work with just assume that any strategy that they learn about has an edge. They're a little surprised to learn that edge varies with the market character, the underlying stock time, volatility, and seemingly dozens of other factors, don't they? Isn't there always something that you learn every time? Like, oh, I wish I'd known about that. Nobody told me about dividends, right? So think about this. Think about the pitcher versus the batter. Pitchers out there throwing the ball 98 miles an hour, whatever, okay? But don't they have to scout out every batter? Doesn't the batter have to scout out the pitcher and know what their tendencies? Oh, this guy always starts out with a belt high fastball on the inside part of the plate. He does that every time. So if I see that, I'm going to swing. Or the pitcher knows, well, this guy is always a first pitch swinger, so I'm going to throw him some garbage on the outside part of the plate. Right, So if the, if the batter, in this case, maybe can't hit a curveball, then the pitcher has an edge. Oh, I know this guy. This is Pedro Serrano. You know, he's got his Joe Boo in the locker, and he can't hit the curveball. So if he knows that piece of information and he's able to effectively pitch a curveball without hanging it, then he has the edge. The good news here is that many of the best option strategies have the same edge for small accounts as they do for larger accounts. So there's there's a lot of people, you know, oh, man, you know, takes money to make money, and you can't make money with a small account. Yes, you can. You have this, the, the same edge. If you're using the right strategies, and if you're patient enough to let the trade come to you, you have just as much edge as somebody with a larger account trading a much bigger lot size. So let's talk about options edge for a minute. We all know about time value decay gives you an edge to the seller, right? So the edge here favors the seller versus the buyer, unless the volatility is so stinking low that it actually might favor the buyer, which is almost like today's environment, right? But anyway, time value decay, we sell whenever we have the right setup and conditions. That's very, very important. Think about the shifts in implied volatility. Volatility is typically mean reverting. Typically mean reverting vehicle. It always eventually will revert to the mean. We know that. We have to know what's high and likely to compress. We also need to know what is low and likely to expand. And then lastly, we need to understand the path of least resistance. It allows us to set up the best trade depending on whether we expect expansion or contraction of the range. Remember, if you guys listen to me at all, I'm always, I, in my world, there's no such thing as oversold and overbought. There's only range expansion, range contraction. Range expansion, range contraction, things like that, right? So understanding the path of least resistance is what's going to help here. Remember, please hold your questions until the end, folks, and so we'll get to the end in the shortest period of time, and then everybody can do what they need to do. So you must have a defined edge before you put risk capital into play for your account. What is your edge? If you're not sure if you have an edge or not, find out on paper first. Don't find out with your live capital. Find out on paper first. Make it work on paper, whether that's a true virtual account, like paper money or some other type of account that you get through the CBOE, or even just doing it on paper first. It could even be using something like a think back tool to go back in time to determine whether or not something actually did work at least at one time. But we need more skills in this, guys. We need to let it go, narrow our focus, create a system, trade the path of least resistance, trading the right option strategies, understanding our edge, and now... We need to determine what tools that we need. We need to determine what tools we need, right? One mistake that small account traders make is to skimp on their trading tools. I hear this all the time. 
I don't have a big account, so I can't afford to get the tools that I need. Well, that's a vicious cycle, isn't it? So I get it. I get it, though. You have a small account. You don't want to spend or risk any more than you have to. You're going to just dip your toe in the water with this. But this is also what we call the scarcity mindset. The subconscious mind ensures that whatever you focus on, you will get. If you're afraid of loss, guess what you will get? You will get more loss. If you're afraid of spending money on something because you don't have much to, to give, that's where you will stay. Having a scarcity mindset will ensure that your account will stay exactly where it is since this is what you're focusing on. How about that? Isn't that crazy? The opposite of this is the abundance mindset. Guess what? Those with the abundance mindset also get exactly what they want. It's funny how the brain works in this manner. You get exactly what you focus on, guys. So yes, if you want to pursue edge in the markets, then your tools need to be just as good as those of the professionals. Now, we're not talking about some, you know, million dollar HFT program or some kind of, you know, algorithm that you need to run or anything like that. Your brain is as good as most algorithms that are out there. We're not talking about shaving, you know, fractions of a second here and there and things like that, right? We just need your tools to be as good as what the professionals are using. So your number one tool, though, is going to be your subconscious mind. You've got to change your belief system to believe that you can be successful. And there's ways to do that in a very positive way. I do have a subconscious hint for you here that this is what my book is all about, basically retraining your brain to look for success. Tool number two, get the best broker you can find. So many of you guys are out there focusing on the wrong things. You major in minor things. All you're concerned with is your commission cost. That should not be your number one concern right now. Until your Pareto analysis shows you that your number one impediment to profitability is your commission rate, until that point, you need the best broker that you can find with the right tools that are out there. So don't go cheap on commissions if it means that you're going to sacrifice analysis or trading tools that come with the better online platforms. Tool number three, if you're going to use charts, use a platform that you enjoy. So if you're going to be a chartist, if you're going to do things like that, all right, make sure that you have a live feed. I mean, there's people that I know that actually still use a delayed feed. I'm like, come on. This is a very personal decision, though, about charts. So use ones that speak to you. Use ones that you can read and allow you to do what you need to do in terms of studies or scans even, right? So this is an example of where your business plan comes into play. Your business plan should have some type of budget in there for your education needs. If you're going to run this like a business, put a budget in there and say, for 2017, here's my budget for education for trading. I need to get better at what I do, and this is what I'm going to budget for this. But we need more skills. We're still climbing the stairway of skills with let it go, narrow our focus, creating system, trading the path of least resistance, trading the right option strategies, understanding our edge, what tools we're going to use, and here's a different one, hyper-growth money management. Think about this for a second. Most students that I work with do not use money management to grow their accounts. In fact, it's usually the opposite. I usually see traders create positions of random contract size. Something like, well, I always trade 10 contracts. Huh? What does that have to do with your position size? So position size should be set by the risk that you have, not by how much you hope to earn. Ask yourself first, how much am I risking before you ask, how much could I earn on this trade? A good rule of thumb is to limit the risk on any one position to no more than 1% to 2% of your account size. No more than that. In fact, in many cases, it should be far below that level to 1% to 2%. But there's always going to be people that say, well, I've got you know X, X amount and 2% is not going to. So this is per position. 
per position, not aggregate. This is a good start, but as you start to win trades and grow your account, you might need to recalculate that position size. You may have earned the right to increase your contract size by that point. This is called fixed fractional money management. So basically what we're, we're talking about here is that as you start to increase your capital, then you can start to take larger and larger position sizes, right? Because you're playing a little bit more in the house with that. So this is where you can potentially get into that hockey stick growth, right? So you do need a positive expectancy strategy to be able to do this. So this is not something you learn on the fly like, hey, I'm a brand new trader with an unproven system and I'm going to use money management with this. This is an advanced technique which depends on you mastering everything underneath this point on our stay array of skills. So some new techniques are being discovered in the field of money management. Current state of the art that I know about right now is what's called fixed ratio money management, which has got faster growth, less drawdown risk. So don't make the classic mistake of trying to grow your small account by using the hardest strategies to win, which are things like long calls maybe, right? Okay, let's keep growing those those skills up our stairway here. Okay, so we went up through hyper growth money management. Now, another analogy here is the patient sniper. So a lot of us are not that patient with this. So most of us are in a hell of a hurry to make that small account larger. So a, a classic example for something like this is if we say that, that maybe somebody's got a $5,000 account. And I would say to them, hey, would you be happy with making a 20% return? And most people would be overjoyed to get a 20% return. If you could consistently do a 20% return on your account, somebody would be hiring you to manage their account. And so if you said, yeah, but a 20% of, you know, 20 growth on my account, that's just going to turn my $5,000 into $6,000 over the course of a year. And that's not going to do it. So math be damned, right? I, I need something more than that. So somewhere along the way, we've been taught that activity equates to progress. So the very act of placing a trade means that you've evaluated current price, time, and volatility conditions as having an edge for that setup. So is that really true, or are you just bored? Are you looking for entertainment and activity or an adrenaline shot? Perhaps. So think about deer hunters for a second. These guys will bolt themselves up into a tree, strap themselves in, and sit there and freeze all day long waiting for that one shot. I am not one of these guys. I, have, I respect them for doing what they do, though. I, I, I don't think I'd have the patience to do that. Okay, But they know that if they charge through the woods searching for deer, hey, here, deer, you know, using their deer calls, right, that their prey will just run away well in advance of them. Man, I couldn't find any today. I looked all over the place for these deer. It's just not going to work. And, and much many of us trade in the same manner. So patience to wait on the right setup comes from your experience and your mastery of that one setup. See the common theme here? It's the same thing again and again. Okay. We are coming up on the final section here. So we're winding things up here, and I hope you're taking notes in your workbook and you're thinking about some things that you have to do and thinking about things that, you know, you're seeing gaps perhaps in your approach towards trading. And hopefully you're seeing opportunities for what you can do. And my final section here when it comes to trading a small account is to never ring the bell. What on earth is that? Never ringing the bell. Well, if we talk about the Navy SEALs training facility in Coronado, California, notice the row of helmets. They're over here. So all these little helmets right along here. And then also notice the bell. Here's the bell. So wherever they go, wherever they, the SEALs go, in fact, let me go back one 
Wherever they are, there's a bell. Wherever the seals train, there's always a bell. Okay, so all they have to do to stop getting wet and sandy and to stop getting abused is to go over, put their helmet down, ring the bell. They're given warm food and drink. They're sent on their way back to the normal life. Okay, so that, you know, temporarily that sounds pretty good. But that forever terminates their potential of being a Navy SEAL. That's it. Dropped on request. DOR. I want your DOR. So if you ring the bell in this business, you end up working with this guy. Remember this guy? You guys remember this guy. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I've got some new products for you. Hey, my, my research department has told me about this brand new fund, which I think has got your name all over it. Remember this guy. I remember this guy. This is the same guy that took my account down to 30% of its original value all those years ago and convinced me that I needed to do this myself. You don't want to work with this guy again. You need to make up your mind that you will never ring the bell. Never ring the bell. So what if you fail? Well, what about it? You will. That's this job, right? Even Ted Williams, the famous baseball hitter, failed 60% of the time. But 40% success was good enough to make him go in the Hall of Fame. What if you fail? You will. And actually, the, the more that you trade, what you're going to find is your failures, your losing trades are a goldmine of information that you can learn from. But most don't. They move on and they say, well, this strategy is terrible. This is no good. I find, you know, I want that bright, shiny penny over there that looks really easy. Okay? This is how this business works. So failure on an individual trade means that I have an opportunity to learn something. You're not going to learn much from a winning trade, my friends. Treat a failed trade as a gift. Learn everything possible from it. What you will mostly learn is how you responded to the opportunity. So never ring the bell. My story, only when I focus my efforts on one stock, one strategy, put a plan into motion with all the elements that I've shared with you today. Did I start to become consistently profitable and was able to quit my job, get rid of corporate America, and, you know, chase the dream? So what's next? What do we do here tonight? So we've come in under budget, under time. I have just shared a ton of guidance with you. You can use these points with any size account and start producing better results starting tomorrow if you want to. I will take questions in a minute, okay? But I'd like you to join my small account workshop. If you're not ready to ring the bell, I'd like you to join this. Here's what we're going to cover in the small account workshop. Number one, how to let it go. How to create a safe zone, not a safe space, but a safe zone for your capital. How to create risk capital. And how do you earn the right to trade? Number two, how to narrow your focus, how to find your trade and specialize. Number three, how to create a system, how to build business and trading plans to create that comprehensive system. Many folks just don't have the guidance to be able to do this on their own. Number four, trading the path of least resistance, understanding the different states of the market and what character typically will come next, how to be prepared for that. Number five, trading the right option strategies, the strategies that you need to learn today to trade a small options account. Scans and chart studies are included in this. Number six, understanding your edge, how to utilize the three edges of time decay, volatility, and trend or energies in your favor. Number seven, the tools. What tools do you need today to harness the right belief system and to trade options effectively? Hyper-growth money management. Probably haven't heard of this one before. How do you create hyper-growth with fixed fractional and fixed ratio money management? Sample spreadsheet included. 
Number nine, harnessing patience. How to teach yourself the patience to wait on the right setups. Number 10, how not to ring the bell. How do you not ring the bell? How do you stop this vicious cycle of just jumping from strategy to strategy to strategy? How do you get this all together for yourself? It's all in the small account workshop. So what we include with this is three plus hours of Top 10 Skills pre-recorded workshop, which is available tonight if you want it. Tonight, start working on this. All presentation slides are included, money management spreadsheet with all the fixed ratio, fixed fractional as well too. Bullish or bearish stock scans. We include stock scans if you want to do that, or we recommend that you start out with ETFs. Another bonus is going to be the Fractal Energy Study for Thinkorswim and Trade Stations. So the very, very powerful Fractal Energy methodology will be at your fingertips. Another bonus is a five-part options 101 class with Don Kaufman is part of this. So think about this, another five hours of options 101 for this. And I don't care how long you've been trading or who you've been trading with, you will learn something from Options 101 with Don Kaufman. Another bonus here is a three-part top 10 skills for trading a small account class, which is a separate class that I did within the Theo tra Trade chat room. Okay? So all of this, you can join me right now for this for 97 bucks. So all of this information, if you go out to theotrade.com slash small, you can watch this information as many times as you want, this workshop fee. Let me bring this over to show you guys what this actually looks like. So this is the actual, this is what the deliverables are for the class. So in Theotrade, you can see this is under the archives, the Theotrade classes archive. You can see some of the classes that we've got here. Okay. So some of these are just, I mean, look at this. Surviving Extreme Volatility, Options 101, Options 201. Fractal Energy Trading. These are all the classes that we have out there. This is not included with this particular class, all right? But you can get an idea of just all the breadth that we have behind this, okay? So back to the Small Account Options Trading Workshop. You can see that the class itself is in three parts. So each one of these videos can go full screen, full resolution video, right? We've got... Trade Station, uh, we've got Studies and Scans here for Thinkorswim, Trade Station Studies as well too, okay? How to import a study, we've got bullish scans, bearish scans, everything that you need with this, okay? Spreadsheets, okay? So if you go out to theotrade.com slash small, you're going to get this page, and you're going to see, again, everything that's there for this, 97 bucks. This has been very, very well received. So this, is, um, this has made a big difference in a lot of people so far that's trading a small account. So with that in mind, I will take any of your questions. Again, go out to theatrade.com slash small and get started today. I mean, there's hours and hours of material for you today. And this, regardless of the size of your account, you're going to find this to be very, very useful.